everybody, this is Dr. Carmen Bryan. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you to all the new subscribers for joining me. Thank you guys who join me on Sunday and talk to me. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you for all the emails and the inboxes. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. New subscribers, welcome, welcome, welcome to this tribe, to this family. I hope that you are finding some information that is helping you in your process of healing or your awareness or even in your understanding of what narcissist abuse is. And so today, um, I wanted before I start on my topic, I just wanted to respond to one of the subscribers and the comment was is that um, that females are more narcissistic than males and that females are born narciss with narcissism as opposed to men who are who develop narcissism. Uh, that is a myth. That is not true. Uh, children are not born narcissists. Um, so um, understand that narcissistic personality disorder or personality disorders developed from a uh, dysfunctional something happened within the developmental stages that caused the uh, the, the personality to um, develop um, uh, in a dysfunctional way something has happened um, during that time of development from birth to probably because uh, psychologists well uh, according to studies um, in children uh, they do not diagnose narcissistic personality disorder until the age of 18. I think it's 18. And so um, as they as children are growing up, it is very common. Many people have narcissistic traits. I hate to use that term, but most people have narcissistic traits. That does not mean you have a disorder, a dysfunction of the character. It's just that you have narcissistic traits and children have narcissistic traits. It's very common, you know, to see a lot of the traits in children that are developing and growing and, and learning uh, uh, to be autonomous. You know, they're learning, they're discovering themselves. They're learning how to fit into society they're learning competition and empathy you know but by the time they're 18 years old a psychologist or a therapist can diagnose um, narcissistic personality disorder so people are not born narcissist narcissistic it is a dysfunction in the development of um, the personality meaning something has happened in that time where there's trauma or even if they're being raised by narcissistic parents you watch a lot of celebrities now who are narcissists very open to narcissists you guys recognize narcissism and they um, remember the children are sources of supply as well so they are they they receive fuel from their children they get attention because of their children so they develop their children and they raise them up to be narcissists as well their environment you know there's still study being done as to how narcissism um, develops but even training them up to be narcissists and not having empathy and you're better than the average person being raised by a narcissistic parent you know and not having empathy and and this is normal development for them they're developing into narcissists uh, as I've said before in many other videos the those that I have diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder or I know were narcissists and many of you uh, a lot of them um, were traumatized in childhood abandonment uh, trauma, sexual abuse, physical abuse, and as you know, uh, trauma-related uh, disorders, personality disorders, are not always narcissistic personality disorder. You have borderline personality disorder. You have histrionic personality disorder. You have antisocial personality disorder, which is the um, psychopath sociopath. You have uh, multiple personalities, which is known as a dissociative disorder because the trauma was so um, intense. But whatever happened to that narcissist caused the empathy and the compassion to be cut off in that part of the brain. And we talked about this uh, you know, the imaging of the brain and how the brain looks under, um, I think is F M, uh, uh, fmri uh where they did the imaging to see what the brain looks like uh, that of a narcissist versus that of a normal person you see there is a difference um also um in accordance to the dsm-5 which is the uh, diagnostic Statist statistical manual of uh, psychiatric disorders um we are on dsm-5 the fifth 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 version uh, which i think was printed in 2013 it says statistically under that disorder that 50 to 75 percent of those that have been diagnosed in a clinical setting were males now keep in mind i agree with some of you um that uh you know i think it may be an underrepresentation of of the amount of people that have narcissistic personality disorder but this is in a clinical setting where they have done the diagnosis and the 
um, the diagnosis and the um, the testing to determine whether or not a person has narcissistic personality disorder, and that is the statistic that was provided. Now, whether uh, you know uh, what narcissist you know is just going to volunteer to you know, and then on top of that, for us clinicians, there is no database where we sign you know a release of information from our clients to upload this information. Um, they need to have one. I need to go research that, but. Um, they don't, you know, we don't do disclosure statements with our clients and upload, you know, the statistics or the information we receive from those that have been uh, diagnosed with um, with a narcissistic personality disorder or any other cluster B disorder. So I believe that it is underreported, and you see now there is a great influx in uh, the amount of people with narcissistic personality disorder. Now, when I say that, you know, most of you are not clinicians or medical professionals where you just diagnose people but you are becoming very aware uh, especially through videos that you're watching the education you're receiving you are now more aware of the symptoms that point to narcissistic personality disorder and a lot of you have been in relationships with people that have NPD and so it is very very most of you guys can point out five to nine traits um, of the narcissist you know uh, and that is a, a, the manual the statistical manual you guys can point out the traits and so no females are not born narcissism males are not created um, that people are not born narcissists uh, they learn from their environment and they grow uh, and they have narcissistic traits most of them and they grow out of it however narcissistic person that NPD the disorder which is dysfunctional and gives them problem in the work environment with themselves interacting with people it causes problems is dysfunctional problem that causing problems within society and with themselves that is the disorder so I uh, disagree with with that statement now on to our topic the topic for today is is um why narcissists do not give you closure you know they, they don't give you closure um and so i went to psychology today and um this is uh miss mariana baka Buck Buck Arova, phd and she wrote an article why we need closure from broken relationships and i wanted to integrate that uh into what i was going to talk about today and i'm going to skip down a little bit <clears throat> And so what she was saying was, is that, you know, with students and clients and friends, she's heard the mantra, no one can give you closure but yourself. Uh, it's usually said uh, defeatedly while holding back tears after they've explained that their former partner refuses to acknowledge why relationships ended. Uh, the mantra unsurprisingly often comes as a form of advice from well-meaning friends and family members. That is true. Or co-workers trying to be sympathetic to someone who is stuck in a bad situation. That bad situation is usually one that involves a one-sided breakup where the person dissolving the relationship has not acted kindly, decently, or even humanely in the aftermath. In the attempt to shirk responsibility and guilt, he or she refuses to give former partner closure, causing the rejected party tremendous pain and distress. Um, before I start talking, let me just look and see here. If I wanted to add something in there real quick on here. Um, when a person is rejected and refused honest answers about why a relationship uh, ended, they are left depleted of their dignity. Uh, let's see. Uh, thus, the advice to get your own closure infuses the notion that the person who has just been rejected is now responsible for moving past a decision they do not fully understand, therefore cannot psychologically reconcile, and did not make and are thus insufficiently prepared to navigate. So according to the phenomenological research, closure is knowing the reason a romantic relationship was terminated and no longer feeling emotionally attached or pain, thereby allowing for the establishment of new and healthy relationship. The devastation that comes from a breakup up is thus not only caused by partnership that is lost but also by the lack of clarity about why the relationship dissolved okay let's talk about the narcissist why would a narcissist give you closure closure meaning that um you know that they would have to admit to their uh 
part of, of the role that they played in the relationship, meaning that they take, they acknowledge and they take responsibility for the role that they played in the relationship that hurt you. You know, this just didn't work. You know, uh, you weren't my type or, you know, I don't think that I'm going to change or, you know, I, I realize how, uh, you know, the role that I've played in this relationship and I don't think is working. I'm not happy. You're not happy. And I want to see you happy. That's too empathetic. Uh, and a narcissist is not going to point. They're not going to look within and they're not going to point point out, you know, their deficiencies. They're not going to acknowledge, nor are they going to accept responsibility for the roles that they play. It's always going to be your fault. And so in this situation, I must say that when you're coming out of a narcissistic relationship, you do have to learn to discover your own closure because of the fact closure, meaning that you have closed the door, locked the door and threw away the key and you're moving forward in your life and you're healing and you're, you're trying to, where well, you're learning through videos and education what narcissist abuse is or was and what role these narcissists play what their problem was you know what is this personality disorder what are the characteristics of this and you taking your responsibility meaning that maybe I didn't research enough of this individual you know there were some red flags that I've ignored that I didn't realize you know there are some wounds in my heart that uh, weren't closed you know there, there were things that were going on that I did not see. I did not see this coming. I did not realize I was being played. They lied to me. They presented this image of this perfect person. And I desperately wanted to believe because I wanted love. I wanted a relationship. And so I kind of dismissed a lot of the red flags. You know, that's our responsibility. But the game that was played, the harsh and cruel game that was played and the purpose for the relationship, the real reason behind the relationship for supply, that that is the responsibility of that narcissist, the cruel game that they played, the pain that they caused, the trauma bonding, the lies that they told to make you believe that they were this perfect person, this perfect soulmate, you know, that you had been looking for. If it was too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true, you know, but, you know, to close that door means you have entirely too much power, meaning you do have to learn how to close that door and move forward. Anytime you break up with a person or you sell a house, they normally change the locks because someone else has the keys. So they change the locks on there so that no one can get back in the house because there's valuables inside of that house. Well, leaving a relationship and, and going no contact or getting out of a relationship with a narcissist means you have to change the locks. And because now that key to your heart will no longer be functional. And that takes time because they have the key to your heart. You have to slowly learn because there are so many different compartments in your heart that they have the keys to open you up and cause injury in your in those different parts of your heart. Relationship, finances, romantic relationship, children, you know, life that I thought we had together. There's so many different compartments to your heart that they had keys to. You know, your heart is this mansion and 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 they have gotten into every area of your heart, your mind your body your soul and you're learning how you know okay I need to change this lock I need to change this lock I need to change this lock you know this is the lock to my mind this is the, the, the lock to my heart you know so you're learning how to by watching videos and learning and educating yourself you're learning how to take control back and a narcissist doesn't want you to have control they want to be able to come through those doors anytime they want to just in case and because remember till death do us part they always assume that you are their supply and if i need to come back to you i should have easy access meaning that i'm not going to allow you to close the door nor am i going to help you close the door because that means you have too much power that means i don't have access to you like i wanted to have access to you that's why they hoover they hoover they throw that bait out to see if you're going to bite and a lot of you have admitted that, you know, hey, you know, I went back. I fell for the Hoover and I went back. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> to them, that's a sign of weakness. To you, that's love. You love that individual. You went back with hope. Hope is the last thing to leave, remember? So you went back with hope. Maybe they're changed. Maybe it'd be different. Maybe they realized how valuable I was in their life or, you know, how much we meant. They miss me. You know, maybe things can be different. You have this hope in your head. They don't. They see you as replenished and refueled. And now I need to come and get the rest of that fuel from you. So every time you walk away and refuel yourself and, you you know, you could have lost a whole bunch of weight and you're looking good now or you finally gained your weight back. You're healthy. You're doing well for yourself. Well, you've just refueled, you know, and if you ever watch um, gas stations, you know, um, 
whenever they run out of fuel they bring the big gas truck in there you know the big exxon or the big gas the fueler that comes in and puts gas into the tanks that's underneath the um gas station but when the fuel starts running low you notice that that when you press the uh, gas it starts shaking because it's pumping out the rest of that um that fuel that's in that tank you can tell that it is is kind of slow then it pumps out kind of slow it's got a sludge to it you know it's not really pumping out really fast well that's the same thing with a narcissist they wait for you to refuel and when they realize the pumps are full they come back to try to drain you of that new energy you've gained and so really you end up being worse and worse and worse and worse because someone is playing with your emotions someone that does not care about anything but themselves and so you do have to find your own closure you do have to learn about yourself that's why i emphasize over and over again find a good counselor not all counselors understand the um the results of narcissist abuse they view it as a um you know you have the domestic violence but with narcissist abuse or abuse by cluster b personality disorders psychopaths you know this is a very very insidious and very deep wound that has been caused this is not normal domestic violence as we know it and as we've been taught you know they talk about the power and control wheel well there's also the cycle of relationship within a narcissist um uh, relationship and so these wounds run deep because these people are very insidious you know in a uh, domestic violent relationship where a person may have some alcohol issues may have some trauma in their own life where both can be rehabilitated you know the man the woman whoever can be rehabilitated and, and counseling and help them wake up and have a, a, a you know learn about their own abuse their own childhood and then come together and work things out and then have a productive relationship that those, those are the cases but in a narcissistic relationship there they they are applying the same methodology that they use for a regular domestic well nothing is regular but for a regular domestic violent counseling this is not the same and the approach is not the same so it's almost like you have to go in with the assumption that everyone is a narcissist and work from there to see if things change because if you don't you'll miss it you will actually re-victimize people and this is to those people that are in the helping field uh, i mean you can't mistreat people but you know you have to go into it with you know it's, it's almost like you're going you're going with all your gear on and you you it's you overprotect rather than underprotect and when i say overprotect i don't mean you go into counseling and overprotect these people and make them dependent on you but you go in with the mindset i've got to go in fully armed knowledgeable about not knowledgeable about narcissist abuse even if it's not at that level 10 but i'm gonna go in with the compassionate understanding it's a possibility you could have been connected to a narcissist i'll ask questions i'm not just gonna come and say that you're narcissist but i'm gonna come in and ask questions and i'm gonna handle it as such until i determine that okay this person wasn't a narcissist this person just has some family issues this person has some alcohol problems you know there's been some trauma in their life and we can work this that we can work this out but even narcissists will come into your office and sometimes fly under the radar very often re-traumatizing the victim and you don't even realize that the victim is the victim you know and so like i said not every uh therapist is is conscientious or educated about narcissist abuse yet and so sometimes they come off as being very um, insensitive because they're they don't know and so for those of you that i say go get counseling find a counselor that understands domestic violence ask them if they understand cluster b personality disorders and the effects of being in a relationship with individuals like that um ask them you know domestic violence right now the 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 one thing domestic violence counseling sexual assault counseling you know these are the counselors the trauma counselors these are the counselors that you need to go and talk to you know uh, uh, people that understand post-traumatic stress and complex post-traumatic stress uh but narcissists are not going to give you um closure closure means that no contact closure means no contact closure means that i don't have access to you like i wanted to have access to you closure means that you took your power back you have power and i don't like that so i'm not going to let you close that door and i'm not going to help you close that door because that makes it that makes me vulnerable that means i can't have access to the fuel that i need especially if you go refuel i can't get my foot back in the door 
no contact no contact on social media no contact with friends no contact with family you know now there's a difference with uh and some of you have asked should i go with no contact with the family the family has always been very neutral and very supportive of me you know you just have to be careful at what they're reporting to the narcissist because the narcissist is very manipulative and can ask a lot of questions you know hey you know um you know i just want to know how they're doing if they don't know that the individual is like that the narcissist will ask questions of the family member mutual family members that you have with the individual so just be careful be aware and do what you need to do to protect yourself so i know this is not a long video but hopefully that answered the question about why they don't give you closure because they still want access to you that's pretty easy i could have just stopped the video there huh but i just want to make sure that you guys understood that yes you do have to seek your own closure you do have to seek counseling you do and closure for a lot of people that have been in narcissistic relationships closure is going to take time because there's so many components that they you know a regular con a regular relationship with what we don't know what normal is anymore you know leaving a relationship it takes a little time to get over you know we get some closures i apologize i didn't mean to hurt you i realized my behavior taking accountability narcissists are not going to take accountability narcissists are never going to admit to their fault it's always going to be your fault i remember a lady telling me about um the narcissist that raised her son and um he went back um to provide the son with closure because he was very abusive and he apologized for his behavior said that he was a young father he didn't know how to parent he did not know how to um you know parent and he did cause some trauma and he apologized for um you know what he had done and in the midst of that <clears throat> in the midst of that healing process he t immediately turned around and said and now keep in mind he abused the child from the time that he was probably like eight eight or nine years old i believe it was or five six seven eight nine ten years old during that time frame one time he's about five to thirteen i think it was five to thirteen so he had five to twelve or five to thirteen so he abused this child from the age of probably like five or six years old till probably about the age of 13. and he told him he apologized for his role that he played and that he was a young father then he turned around and told this this young man he's a grown man told this young man but you do understand the role that you played and that you provoked me a lot of times a child children do children's stuff but he told the young man he says that you played a role in that and you did things to purposely provoke me you did things you know after all that beautiful apology so see they'll never give you they'll never give you closure they'll always make sure that doors open even with their children even with their own kids they can't admit to their faults when they do they that's just that's too much you get they're giving up too much power so hopefully this has helped you guys get, to get some understanding of why they don't give you closure and to answer some questions or some make some comments on some of the comments that were made on the youtube channel and so thank you guys so much for joining me if you have not already my books have come in oh man i don't have a book hold on let me grab a book so my books have come in so let me grab one of the books and open it up i just received a big old box of books so this is my book if you have not ordered it already it is unmasking the illusion of perfection you can find it on barnes and noble and on ebook and on amazon you can get it on amazon and it is on kindle and it's only $12.95. I think it's $28.95 for the hardcover. Uh, but it's only $12.95, a nominal fee. It's a quick read. It's an easy read. It's a good read. <clears throat> it is a Christian book. So those of you that are not believers, take out the principles. Because I took this book and what I did was that we talk about narcissist abuse all the time. Uh, but I wanted to show you what it was like played out. The situations that, uh, and, and in this particular case, it was women who told their story. These are real women stories. These are stories of real women in this book. And they tell their story of what families they came from, how they've been exposed to it, how they were groomed unknowingly, and how they got into these relationships and the things that they were thinking, stuff that happened to their children, how they couldn't defend their children, you know, and the thoughts that was on their mind, even to a point where they were homicidal and suicidal. Um, there is encouragement. It also talks to the men in here. So I did put in here talking to the men and how, how some women have treated men and how they talk to men. You know, some of the things that I witnessed on how women handle men. Uh, but, the, you know, it is uh, I do provide Christian encouragement, uh, but just take out the, the principles. Take out the principle of this book so you can see what it looks like for narcissist abuse to be played out. And you will find yourself in this book. I'm telling you, you will find yourself in this book. It's an easy read, quick read. Some people say they've read it two or three times uh, because they can identify uh, with the people 
people that were in this book because they went through it too and you can add on to the story so amazon uh it's on amazon you can buy kindle and on barnes and noble and on i think is uh westbowpress.com you can purchase it there as well it is unmasking the illusion of perfection those of you that have asked you wanted to donate and i really really appreciate uh you wanting to donate if you look at the end of the video down underneath in the um description i will leave my cash app and i will leave the paypal account and links to where you can purchase the book and i really appreciate your donate your, your donation do know that your donations will go toward um uh, building class the online classes that i told you guys that i'm going to do the online class is going to go toward um doing the um the book and the um magazines and as well as the workbooks that go with the online classes that i will be offering that i am working on now and so thank you guys for all the new followers if you have not already please hit the subscribe button i am dr carmen bryant overcoming narcissist abuse hit the bell so you know whenever i upload tuesday through friday i pre-record and i upload and then on sundays i come on live between 8 and 9 o'clock pacific standard time lately i've been able to come on a little early but 8 and 9 8 between 8 and 9 o'clock pacific standard time uh and that is west coast time and so uh, i'm also on uh facebook my facebook channel is overcoming narcissist abuse hit the like button i'm also under um, psychological health consultants and services that is my professional page both of my professional pages one has my book on it uh, overcoming narcissist abuse has my book cover on it for those of you that would like to see the book Thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. I am so appreciative to all of you and thank you for all the questions uh, and allowing me to think and provide you with information. I so enjoy you guys. Thank you guys so much. Know that you are well loved, you are appreciated, and I hope this information is helping you guys share this information. Somebody needs to hear this and go be great.